Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to this uh, presentation at the uh, Richmond Police Department Training Academy. Uh, this is our annual report to the community on crime statistics and crime trends and some of the innovations that uh, we are uh, working on that we've uh, tried out in the last year and we are anticipating in 2016 as well. Uh, we're honored to have uh, Mayor Jones here joining uh, Chief Durham. They'll be making the presentation and we have a number of different elements to it that I'd like to go through right now. Uh, we'll be talking about the 2015 crime statistics and public safety trends as we always do each year. In addition, we're going to be speaking Speaking about curbing gun violence. That's going to be one of the themes today, and that involves our fugitives and firearms initiatives that we hold each year with the Virginia State Police. This year we actually did two of them, one in the summer and one in the fall as well, and some of the evidence you can see right here of the success that they had with those, and we'll be giving the report as well on the FFI effort. In addition, we'll be talking about 2016 homicides. We had several early in the year that has sparked some community interest, so Chief Durham will be addressing those as well. And finally, we'll be introducing to you an innovative program that the chief has brought uh, called Gun 250. It's an award program for tips that would lead to the seizure of illegally held firearms. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, we'll have people joining us and then sitting back down again. So when you're called forward, those of you who know that you'll be here to be honored for your FFI initiative and for other uh, moments the chief would like to uh, bring you forward, please come up and, uh, and enjoy the moment with him. Uh, we appreciate you being here today. So it'll be those four elements. After it's all said and done, there'll be time for questions as well. Thank you. So it's my honor to present Mayor Dwight Jones. Thanks, Gene, and thank all of you for being here today. Uh, Chief Durham and I are here to talk to you a little bit about public safety in the city of Richmond for the year of 2015, specifically, we're here to talk about crime. And uh, I'm very proud to tell you today uh, that crime is down in our city. Chief Dorham is going to provide a finer detail, uh, but to me, that's the best news that we can hear as a community that uh, violent crime in Richmond has dropped yet again, another 12% decline last year. So I think that that's excellent news. And I think that we need to keep things in proper context because it's the largest percentage of reduction in the last seven years. Uh, when I took office seven years ago, violent crime uh, was up, but it has dropped by almost a third. And I want to reiterate that violent crime is down 30 percent since 2009. So And we're all about the business of building a better Richmond, the best Richmond, but the best thing we can do is to provide a context and environment where people feel safe, because when people feel safe, good things are able to happen. With that said, we do have some work to do in certain areas. One particular area where we have some work to do is in property crime, which rose by 2% on last year. Uh, the chief tells me that his officers would have been able to reduce this statistic as well if people would just do some simple things. Simple things like locking your vehicles, thefts of items taken from motor vehicles, many in plain view, heavily influence our property crime uh, statistics. Uh, the chief and I, if you have not seen it yet, recently shot a public service announcement for which we'll be receiving a golden award, globe award. Uh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. Yo, yo, yeah. <laughs> Well, get ready. We're going to get a, an award for this public service announcement, and so we want to have you take a look at it. I think somebody's going to cue that up now. Mayor, violent crime is down across the city in every category. Well, Chief, if violent crime is down, then why are we here? Well, it's down in every category except theft from motor vehicles. You mean people are leaving things in their cars that's an easy target for criminal activity? Yes, sir. I mean, as we look here, sir, a laptop bag and a backpack. Chief. There's a phone charger in this car. Mayor, several packages here. A computer bag. There's a laptop in here. A pocketbook. A camera. And it's unlocked. So take your stuff or someone else will. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so it's really simple. Put your junk in the trunk and please lock your cars and hopefully the media will help us get that message out 
because it doesn't sound like it's important, but at the end of the day, sometimes we're contributors to the crimes that we are affected by. And sometimes we, if we take a simple step, uh, we can do something to prevent that. Uh, we also want today to uh, highlight two initiatives that target on gun violence in the city of Richmond. And the two initiatives are fugitives and the Fugitive and Firearms Initiative and the program called Gun 250. And I didn't understand that, so the chief explained to me that the police are the 5-0, so it's Guns 250. Uh, the Fugitive and the Firearms Initiative, FFI, as it's called, targets fugitives from justice and illegally held firearms. For years, our officers have partnered with the Virginia State Police, and I see some of them here today, to sweep the city during the summer months. And this year, we added a second FFI during the fall months, and it was equally as successful. And in a moment, we'll be showing you some of the weapons that were seized, and you can see them here on display, weapons that can no longer be used to commit crimes because we have them in our possession. And I want to congratulate our police force and our partners for getting these guns off the street. And Guns 250, this is a program that gives people up to $250 for tips that lead to the seizure of illegally held weapons. It's so new, it won't be up and running until February, but today we give you a sneak peek as to how it's going to work and how money is being offered so we can collect money so that we'll have the money to offer for those who are able to help us get guns off the street. And speaking of money today, I have the opportunity to challenge the Richmond business community to help us with this program because it will be successful when we have enough money in the program to be able to give the $250 or more to individuals who help us get the streets, uh, the, get the uh, guns off the streets. And so it means that uh, we need for businesses to help us fund this. And I believe the chief will talk more about it in his remarks. But at this point, we have uh, a certain amount of money that will allow us to get started. But businesses always ask me, well, Mr. Mayor, what can we do? And this is a tangible, practical thing that businesses can do to help us make our city, uh, city a safer city. And that is helping us to fund this program so that we can uh, entice and incentivize people to bring guns in so that guns like these will no longer be under somebody's seat or in somebody's hands, but they will be off of the street. So we need help to keep cash flowing and to all the business owners in Richmond, uh, we want you to know that when you contribute, you help us reduce violence in the city in a great way. And that's one of the key messages here today. We can all play a part in making Richmond a safer place. And I'm pleased to report that Richmond is being noticed for the successes that we have in reducing crime. Last year, the chief and I were featured guests on C-SPAN's show that aired nationwide called the Washington Journal. We were on the show talking about how safe Richmond has become and our police force and community's diligence in getting to this point. The 2015 World Championship showcased our great city around the globe and it was not lost on anybody that we had one of the best uh, uh, safety records for an event like that that had ever been seen. The RPD officers kept hundreds of thousands of visitors who witnessed the spectacle safe, and we sent those visitors home with stories to tell about positive, friendly, helpful encounters that they had with our men and women in uniform. And so I'm going to bring up uh, the chief, but before I do, I just want to take a moment to mention three of our very fine Richmond uh, Police Department officers who were shot in the line of duty last year. I think that we need to continue to lift up their names uh, and to honor their valor and to not forget the sacrifices that they made. And so I just want to call the name of Officer William Turner, Officer Ryan Bailey, and Officer Matt Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, and we want to make sure that we continue to remember the valor of these individual officers. These officers were injured while protecting us. They were injured while protecting our families and our property. They put their lives at risk so that we could have uh, the communities where we have no fear of walking 
to and fro, and for this we are extremely grateful. So let's recognize their valor with a round of applause. But not only them, whenever I speak in this context, I always want to express appreciation to the men and women of the Richmond Police Department, to you, Chief Durham, for doing such a wonderful job. We feel safer because of the work that you do. We appreciate your putting yourselves in harm's way day after day after day, and we want you to know that we appreciate the fact that crime in Richmond is on the decline. Thank you so much. Well, good morning. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to provide you with an update of the summary of our policing initiatives in 2015. When I was appointed the chief of police at the beginning of the year, I challenged the members of the department to not only meet, but far exceed the expectations of the community. I asked them to develop close, genuine relationships with the community and come together to build a strong, thriving communities that every resident of Richmond deserves. I laid out that challenge at the beginning of the year, <clears throat> and the men and the women of the Richmond Police Department rose to that task. We can't ignore that it's been a difficult year for police in many parts of the country. So many departments struggle to curb rising violence and mend their fractured relationships with the community. With that context, I am incredibly proud of the members of the Richmond Police Department. I am grateful for their dedication, hard work, and selflessness. I am sure the residents of Richmond are equally grateful for our officer's service. I think it's important to recognize, as the mayor just stated, officers Bill Turner, Ryan Belly, and Matt Cavanaugh, who were shot and injured during, during separate shooting incidents this past year. Thankfully, all three officers are recovering. But those incidents are just a stark reminder of the dangers that our officers face on a daily basis. I want to also thank our many partners and supporters, the mayor, city other city departments, our brothers and sisters from Virginia State Police, our neighboring police departments, our faith leaders, business community, the office of the attorney general, and others, others in the communities that we work with and collaborate with every day, and who have stood by us last year. While we certainly have more work to do, we have made great strides this past year. We finished this past year with a 12% reduction in violent crime, the largest year-to-date reduction in seven years. But more telling, it's the lowest amount of violent crime that the city has seen in the last 45 years. Let me say that again. It's the lowest amount of violent crime that the city has seen in the last 45 years, and we only have records to go back to 1970. And while I firmly believe that even one homicide is one too many, we finished the year with four fewer homicides. We had 39 last year compared to 43 in 2014. Of the 39 homicides this past year, 28 of those cases were closed, thanks to the outstanding group of detectives working those cases. Those are not just symbolic numbers. Closure means that dangerous offenders were brought to justice. I'd like to take a moment to go over some additional information. So as you look at the numbers, when we talk about our violent crimes, your violent crimes are your homicides, rapes, robberies, and aggravated assaults. Your arsons, burglary, and property, uh, auto thefts comes under your property crimes. But in every violent crime, with the exception, we had a slight increase at the end of the year in our rapes. Every violent crime was down. That is very significant. I think, I think a picture's worth a thousand words. This graph shows it all. If you look at it, again, from 2000 deep, just to continually trend, uh, trending down, when you look at it, you measure crime per residence, per 1,000 residents. As you can see, five years ago, seven, resi out of, uh, seven residents out of 1,000 were being the victims of violent crime. Today, that number has been reduced to 5.1. When we talk about property crimes, again, we started seeing the trend. However, again, because of the 2% increase in our property crimes, as, as you saw in our award-winning video presentation here, uh, the thing is, is property crimes is what's really killing us, ladies and gentlemen. We need the community support. Property crimes and theft from autos is what really drove our property crimes increase this year. So when you go back again, so we have 40, 
40 uh, uh, residents out of 1,000 were victims of uh, property crimes. So when you look at all major crimes, major crimes is a total combination of both your violent crime and your property crime. We can see the downward trend, just the increase of 0.2%, but yet we are start, still trending down, and that's the direction we want to go. One thing I'll be talking about um, in a moment, when you look at the increase of our population here in the city of Richmond, the population continues to grow, and we see that downward trend of, of our, our, property, our uh, major crime. So again, the blue line represents the increase in population throughout the course of the last five years, and you can see a continued decline in, property, in violent crime. But beyond the crime statistics, the outreach, community engagement, and partnerships that this agency is, fo is fostering are second to none. Those are the main reasons that we have been able to achieve the substantial crime reductions and other successes. We have connected with thousands of members of this community through a variety of programs and initiatives. Our peeps and police, our town hall meetings, our walking beats, and neighborhood meetings, and many other programs that we have implemented during the last year. Our upcoming life program, law enforcement intervention focusing on education will provide, should I say continue, to build upon that foundation of positive community relations, especially with our youth. It's no coincidence that the city continues to grow at a substantial rate. The perception of overall safety and the health and well-being of the community are tied to city growth. A safe, a safe city supports and promotes growth. And even as the city has grown year after year, we continue to reduce crime. That sustained, sustained asset, success also attracts more visitors and more events to the city, such as when we hosted the 2015 UCI World Championships in September. The world's eyes were on us as our officers displayed unwavering professionalism throughout the many long days to ensure that it was a safe and successful event. You may also heard recently that Travel and Leisure reported that Richmond is one of the world's best places to travel in 2016. Earlier this week, the real estate website Zillow named Richmond the fourth hottest housing market in the nation. And then just Wednesday, the National Geographic named Richmond the top destination in world food for rural food travelers. A lot's going on. Could it be that we have created a safe and thriving city? I would say yes. And now more and more people are taking note of our great city. The people of Richmond should be proud I, for one, am proud to lead the finest police department in the nation, and we look forward for a great 2016. Thank you. As I've stated earlier, we have made some great strides this past year, but we realize we have much more to do. The shooting death of 12-year-old Amaya Jones is a tragic reminder that we must continue to work tirelessly to stop those who callously believe arguments are solved with the pull of a trigger. Our Firearms and Fugitive Initiative, an initiative designed to combat gun violence, was held twice last year. The men and women, women standing here did an outstanding job. During a total of 90 days of the operation, the FFI team members recovered 240 firearms. That's 240 guns off the streets and out of the hand of violent offenders. They made 585 arrests and apprehended 366 individuals who were wanted on warrants. In total, the FFI officers had 8,336 citizens contacts. And I should note, of those 8,336 contacts, there were only three complaints made by citizens. That's an incredible accomplishment in itself and highlights our focus on professionalism, and in particular, the productive, patient, and fair approach of our FFI officers. I would like to thank all of our officers and our partners who work with us. I particularly like to thank the Virginia State Police for their partnership in helping us out with our FFI and making this initiative successful. I'd like to introduce you now to Captain Stephen Chumley of Virginia State Police and invite him to say a few words. Thank you, Chief, Mayor Jones, and to the media and all those that are here today. We are very grateful to be partners in making Richmond a safe and better place in which to live. That's important to us. 
And often I think of our troopers and police officers, you know, we, we may have different patches on today. Maybe our uniforms are a different color. But we have the same purpose. And we're on the same team. And there's nothing more important for a police officer than to make the community in which he or she serves a safer place in which to live. You know, I think of a police officer having a warrior mentality, but also we see that a police officer is to have a guardian mentality. And your good police officer knows the difference, when to be a warrior and when to be a guardian. And our desire is to continue in this partnership. We have been doing this for many years, and I can't help but think of all the lives that have been saved injuries prevented as a result of this effort to get dangerous firearms off the streets of Richmond. We will continue to be your partner. We will be there for you when you need us, and we are glad and proud to serve uh, this great city. Thank you. And I have to say, as Stephen just stated, a phone call, text, text, message, email away, and they're there to support our community. Thanks again, Virginia State Police. To underscore these officers' great work, this display of firearms is a concrete example of what our officers face daily on the street. In 2015, our officers took 802 firearms off the street. That equates to two guns per day. Thanks again in large part in the effort of our FFI team members. The guns displayed here only represents one month worth of the weapons that were recovered in 2015. Just one month. That says a lot. It's also troubling, a troubling reminder that some of our communities continue to be terrorized by violent and dangerous offenders with guns. But most important reminder is that these are weapons that are used by people to take lives and settle disputes. I'd like to take a moment to introduce some special guests. Thank you all. Will Murray, Charlene, Trey, and Deshaun come up, please? Well, thank you all for joining us today. These are people, they're survivors, members of the community that works with us, and they know, they remind us of how important our jobs are. So I would like for you to make a few comments. Good morning. I stand before you as a member of the Richmond Homicide Support Group, a group that's dedicated to give aid and support to those of us who have lost loved ones to violence. On Saturday, August the 15th of 1987, we received a phone call, my family received a phone call that would forever change our lives. On that day, a police officer called us to inform us that my sister, who was 30 years old at that time, had been shot and killed by her husband, who then used that same gun to shoot their daughter, my two-year-old niece, Krista, and then turned the gun on himself. The details of that day are just as fresh today as it was almost 30 years ago. The media has had a tendency to desensitize the people's ideas of violence. But for those of us who have had personal experience, it's a daily, ongoing reminder of our pain, our hurt, and our loss. So we, the members of the Richmond Homicide Support Group, we stand today with Mayor Durham and the police department, and all of us should stand together the private citizens, the legislatures, the uh, communities of faith, 
Everyone needs to stand together so that we can stop the senseless killings of our loved ones, our neighbors, our families. It's time for us to join forces and do whatever is necessary to get the guns off the street. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Charlene Boone. And on August the 5th of last year, um, I took out a phone call. And my son was in an altercation with the Richmond Police Department. And my son's name was Keyshawn Hargrove. He took it upon himself to, um, I guess, be an army, a one-man army against the Richmond Police Department. And um, he got into it with them. And unfortunate, um, he didn't come out well. You know, He was shot and killed. And the Richmond, um, Richmond Police Department, they had to do their job to protect themselves, which I understood. Um, I was angry, but I also know my child. And for a mother to always say, uh, you know, my child not doing this, my child not doing that. We don't know what our children are doing once they cross their dose here. And during the process of this happening, I met two great, wonderful guys that has supported me and my family and has been there. The killing was senseless because Keyshawn knew right from wrong. You know, the media painted him out to be some monster, which he wasn't, but I know that they have a job to do also. But in all saying, standing out there among the people and, and, them, and them young people, you know, I was hearing the things, you know, talking about what, you know, we should ambush the police and all this, you know, and, and how are you gonna do this? <laughs> You know, how are you kids going to do this? Major Drew came to me and he asked me, could I calm the crowd down? And I did exactly that. I calmed the crowd down. Because there won't no use of other people being killed out there. Because they wouldn't have won and it would have been senseless. Getting the guns off the street is very important. You know, it could have been my child, your child, or anybody else's child. I, I do not uphold any of my children. He was a convicted felon and he shouldn't have had one, no way. And it still hurts right today. And I miss Keyshawn so much. Keyshawn had just came home after doing five years as a juvenile. Got locked up when he was 13 and a half. He, Keyshawn just missed his first Thanksgiving in five years and his first Christmas. But I don't care what I have to do to help the Richmond Police Department because I have other children. Get the guns off the street, I would do so. No, I'm no snitch or anything like that, but I don't want to see no more killing or hearing about it. And Chief Durham and Major Drew did me a favor by not allowing me to go back there behind that tape to see my son laying back there. But I just hold on to the good memories. And that's what I'm going to continue to do, is hold on to the good memories. So if we can work together, then we can work together. And I'm going to be there until I close my eyes. And I want to thank Major Drew and Chief Durham and Carol Adams 
and all the other rest of the Richmond Police Department. Because something needs to be done out there. Something needs to be done because we have smaller kids coming up. I'm not saying that we cannot protect ourselves, but it was senseless for Keyshawn to be out there shooting at the police officer when he had no reason at all. Thank you. My name is Trey Young. I'm the president of YAPC, Young Adult Police Commissioners Program. Um, as far as gun violence is concerned, it's very disgusting and disheartening that youth and other young, mind, um, small-minded individuals that have resorted to gun violence to solve disputes as opposed to taking a more rational route, which would be to uh, just talk it out. Um, personally, gun violence has penetrated my inner circle, and I hope and hope and pray that it comes to an end very soon. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for joining us today. These are people. These are citizens in the community. And I think we need to give a round of applause to, to Trey and Deshaun. These are high school seniors. They're high school seniors, part of our young, young adult police commissioners, and they're leaders and, and, and pillars in their community at such a young age, and they get it. But more importantly, as, as, as I was looking and listening as they were standing here, that's what the Richmond Police Department does. We build relationships. Because I said it once, I said it again, and I'll continue to say it, we can't do it alone. We will not rest, but we understand we can't do it alone. The involvement and participation of the community has been and remains critical to our success. Members of the community often provide key information that leads to the closure of a case a known violent offender being taken off the street and the prevention of additional violence. With that in mind, I'd like to take a moment to update you on the four homicides um, of 2016. Homicide number one, the motive was argument. Just before midnight on December 30th, officers responded to the 2200 block of Williamsburg Road to find a person who appeared to have been stabbed. The victim, Tyrese Minor was rushed to a nearby hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries on January the 1st. So the incident occurred on the 30th and he succumbed to his injuries on January the 1st. Within hours of the event, Ken Kenya Williams was subsequently arrested for this incident. The next case is a pending death investigation. The motive appears to be robbery. At approximately 10 a.m. on January the 3rd, Officers responded to the 2200 block of Chateau Drive to find an individual suffering from a gunshot wound. That person later survived. Later, another individual, Eugene Edmund Jr., was dropped off at a nearby hospital suffering from multiple gunshot wounds and succumbed to his injuries. Detectives have ascertained that these two incidents were related. After conferring with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, this incident has been classified as a death investigation because there are a lot of factors that we have to continue to look into as it relates to this investigation. Homicide number two, motive is unknown. At 2.19 a.m. on the morning of January the 3rd, officers responded to the 3800 block of Midlothian Turnpike to find a person suffering from multiple gunshot wounds in the rear of that address. The victim, Quincy Broadnax was transported to a nearby hospital where he, was later, where he succumbed to his injuries and died. Detectives are following up on strong leads in this case. Homicide number three, motive unknown. Shortly after 6 a.m. on January the 6th, officers responded to the 1000 block of Highland View Avenue to find a, dead per to find a person dead from apparent gunshot wounds. That victim, Dejan Ricardo Robinson, was pronounced pronounced dead at the scene. Detectives are following up on strong leads. Homicide number four, motive argument. Just before 10 a.m. on January 7th, officers responded to the 6500 block of Midlothian Turnpike to find a person dead of apparent gunshot wounds. The victim, Mark Jackson Silva, was pronounced dead at the scene. 
We have cleared that case by an arrest. Mr. Alvin Leon Ruffin Jr. was arrested for manslaughter. Again, as we always do, anyone in the community who has information on these cases, we need your help. Please come forward and let us know. Don't let the people who committed these acts continue to be a minister and violent and be, continue to be a menace and terrorize our communities. Do the right thing and come forward. Which brings us to my last announcement. I assure you that the Richmond Police Department, with the help of the community members, we will continue employing innovative ways to intervene and stop dangerous offenders from continuing to terrorize our neighborhoods. That is why I'd like to introduce to you our new firearm tip reward program. People in the community who may, people in the community may know those dangerous offenders who have guns, but may be in fear or may not know what they can do about it. Gun 250, again, as the mayor stated, guns 250, 50 being the police, that's young, uh, youngsters say that. It's a safe and anonymous way for people to inform the police and take dangerous weapons off the street. Starting in mid-February, members of the community who know someone who has a gun or where illegal guns are hidden or located in the city of Richmond can report that information anonymously to the police and would be eligible for a reward up to $250. Providing a gun tip is safe and easy. The process is absolutely anonymous. Tips can be provided 24 hours a day by texting 276, I'm sorry, 274 637. 274 637. In your message, you type the keyword gun 250 and then your tip. It's easy, it's safe, and it's anonymous. Rewards will be paid for tips that result in a firearm recovery and or arrest. The reward amount will vary depending on the numbers and types of firearms recovered and whether any arrests are made as a result of that tip. Last year, 35 of the 39 homicides were committed by use of a firearm. Another 169 people were shot and injured last year. We cannot tolerate this or, and no longer accept this. This is a way for the members of our community to stand up and do what is right and take another gun off the streets and out of the hands of dangerous offenders. We ask the media to continue to partner with, with us and the business community to help us get this information out to the community. And we thank the community for providing us information for helping us build great neighborhoods in Richmond. Thank you, and I am happy to take questions. Yes, ma'am. For the anonymous tip that you send in, if you receive a reward, people may say, well, how, how do I get the money? I mean, if I'm anonymous, how would they know? They will be, I, won't, I don't want to put that information out. It's a process. They will be notified. Okay. And the second question is, as we started the year, and it seemed like we started with the, you know, the homicides, and you hear people on the street saying, what, what are they doing? What are, you know, what's being done right now? I mean, it seems like every other day you look and you see a you know terrible story like the ones that you just talked about. And obviously the community doesn't know everything that's happening behind the scenes, but what do you say to the community about what is happening uh, behind the scenes as you obviously are frustrated to see these things happen? Yeah, you know, it's, 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 I always say the tide of crime ebbs and flows. You know, we, the, the, we were not at number five homicide probably to April of last year. And, and that's alarming. But I think, again, um, we are out here doing some tremendous things with the community. Last year, we closed a number of our homicides besides the great work of the men and women of the Richmond Police Department, but because the community. I think there's trust now. They're starting to believe in that community. And why is that? Because we're communicating, we're having and building relationships. The stats were up there. Unfortunately, we had four folks, five folks, and one is a death investigation, who lost their lives senselessly. All we're doing is responding. Again, we can't do it alone. A lot of folks in these communities know who are involved. They're communicating, but they're not communicating to us. Again, Gun 250, I think it's going to be a start to get people, especially when you can remain anonymous. And, and you know, I came up with the idea, again, because talking to my officers who have talked to folks in the community, and they're saying, Chief, we're afraid to talk. There's no incentive. Well, guess what? One thing I found in Richmond, people love to eat and they love money. So that's one of the things we're going to do to try and incentivize folks to come forward without the fear of retaliation from those folks who are wreaking havoc in our community, in certain communities here in the city of Richmond. There is a, young people especially, snitches get stitches. 
you know, folks are afraid to talk. I mean, are you getting more people to talk? And, and those statistics you've given out today, do those numbers include youth violence? And is youth violence up or down or? Well, youth violence is, 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 is kind of it's kind of leveling off compared to last year. But I will say this, this snitching thing, we, we've been talking about that for years. I don't even entertain that, right? Because let me tell you something. When folks get locked up, they talk. So they're the main ones that snitch it, okay? So let's keep it real. <laughs> they're the main ones who snitch it. So that, that's just some street talk, some street slang, and we're not concerned with that because the thing is, when people start believing you, and, and again, we're not giving tips to those folks in Mosby Court who says when we had the double homicide, oh, enough is enough. There were no tips. People are just fed up. And when they start believing and seeing people being arrested, that's the key right there. When we start putting folks, locking them up, putting them behind bars, that's when that trust is even stronger with the community. So, so you find it is? Up, down. It's up. You, so community support, co uh, folks coming forward with information is up. But how about youth violence? Is, that, is there a statistic for youth violence? <coughs> is gang violence up or down? I was, I, I was, from, from right now, uh, uh, anecdotally, from what I've been reading, I think the stats, we're kind of leveling out right now. <laughs> but we are seeing a majority, that's a good question, a majority of firearms are recovered from our young people. Young people are walking around with guns. Not only walking around with guns, they're shooting themselves accidentally, and this is what problem upsets my officers more than anything, and even parents are involved, we'll get a call to a home, a young youth is shot. They'll say, oh, he was down the street, he was around the corner. Come to find out, he shot himself, and even the parents are covering up for it, but guess what? That's a stat on us because we're, investigate that, we're investigating that shooting as a criminal offense. So how do we get the guns out of these young people's hands? So I'm hoping that you know, some of the young people turn their friends in to get the guns off the street. We have to do whatever we have to do to bring this gun violence down in the city. It's unacceptable. So is that included with the statistics you're giving out today, the youth, youth incidents as well, or, or are they in a separate category? Do I tell you what, let's talk, okay. let's talk later on that. We'll get the information that you're looking for. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, um, Chief. I'd like to know what are you proposing to do about um, identifying suppliers of the guns? You know, we're working with the state. We just had a meeting uh, on yesterday with the state, local, and federal partners, ATF, FBI. That's a big thing. When you look at the, uh, the number of guns, um, and a report was just uh, published where a majority of guns, not only in the city, but the guns that from crimes from Boston all the way down to Florida, Florida on the eastern seaboard, uh, the guns originate from Virginia. And that's the thing. And then we have uh, officers assigned to federal task forces, and they're doing a great job trying to identify who are the suppliers of these weapons, these firearms. So we're working aggressively. And let me, let me, let me, let me, let me assure the, the, the community, right? Everything that we do, you're not going to know. We can't always tell everything that we're doing. We do ask a lot of information we try to publish on our, our, face, uh, um, our website, social media. So I ask and encourage the community to go out there and see some of the things we're doing. Of course, if there's an ongoing investigation, we're not going to be able to talk about that or provide you with that information. But there's, we try to put out so much information, and uh, the staff of the uh, public information office, they do a wonderful job. All right, thank you very much. How about drugs? Drugs is, is drugs an issue? Drugs are always an issue. I think if you look at... Are we seeing research to any particular drug? Or yeah, marijuana. Marijuana. And of course, you know, we still have the heroin overdoses, but folks are losing their lives over weed. And that's, that's just crazy. Either they're going to buy weed, getting shot and killed, or even they're trying to rip drug dealers off. And that's what we're experiencing. So, yes. Officer Sheridan here. Did you know that 80% of theft from motor vehicles occur to unlock cars? Got it. There goes your stuff. Okay, okay, officers, I've learned my lesson. Wait, is he, is he coming back with that? Officer Sheridan here, reminding you that theft from motor vehicles is preventable. Walking away from your car, even for a moment with the windows down? Huzzah! That gave the crook enough time to take your stuff. My packages! Officer! Hello? Hello, I'm Sergeant Legoff from Richmond Police Department. Theft from motor vehicles is a nationwide problem. Please keep all your valuables out of plain view. They'll even steal a box of crackers. Mayor, violent crime is down across the city in every category. Well, Chief, if violent crime is down, then why are we here? Well, it's down in every category except theft from motor vehicles. You mean people are leaving things in their cars that's an easy target for criminal activity? Yes, sir. I mean, as we look here, sir, a laptop bag and a backpack. Chief, 
There's a phone charger in this car. Mirror, several packages here. A computer bag. There's a laptop in here. A pocketbook. A camera. And it's unlocked. So take your stuff or someone else will.